Hi, you guys. I am super excited today because I'm always excited, aren't I? I'm like, oh, I'm so excited about this. Well, I'm actually really excited about this. Vitamin C serum. It's How many of you have been seeing do-it-yourself vitamin C serum on YouTube or on the internet? Research has found that 20% is just strong enough to get into the layers and do the work. Anything more than that irritates the skin. And some of those previous serums can run as much as $166 an ounce. And you can make this for $1.24. So what really is 20%? Before we begin this video, let's briefly talk about free radicals and antioxidants. So we hear the word antioxidant and free radical kind of tossed around like everybody knows exactly what they are. So basically, knowing or having some understanding as to what is going on scientifically really helps to better arm yourself to be more successful. So there is a chemical bond between the molecules in our cells. The sun, radiation, pollution, an electron can be knocked off the chemical bond causing an unpaired electron. This results in a highly reactive free radical. This becomes the bad guy. So this molecule is missing a mate and now it's going to go steal one from a healthy cell nearby. This free radical basically begins to capture or kidnap electrons from healthy molecules around it, causing a chain reaction of stealing. So how do we stop this? The antioxidant. And how does the antioxidant stop this thief? The antioxidant molecules have an extra electron, so they can supply electrons to all the molecules with missing electrons. This basically neutralizes the free radical that have missing electrons, and they give back what was stolen. You can think of it as your hero of skincare. It is the one that has been scientifically proven to repair damage that has been done by free radicals. So let's start making this vitamin C. And this is how you do it. You can just use vitamin C and distilled water, and that's fine. And this is the powder that I purchased. You can just be created. It's about getting a certain amount of liquid with a certain amount of vitamin C. So let's start making our vitamin C. I am in love with this rose water. Oh my God, this smells so good. Oh, I like to use rose water as part of my liquid. It is so lovely. Oh, you're gonna love putting this on your face. This is distilled water. I have a distiller. I have a YouTube on how to distill your own water. I make four gallons a day, 10 cents a gallon. I keep everything in glass bottles. I never use plastic. I would love to save the earth for all you millennials. I love the earth. I'd like to see it last longer. Now you're gonna add a teaspoon of your vitamin C powder and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir until it's completely dissolved and clear. Okay, still not quite dissolved. We're just gonna really mix that for a while. Aloe vera is great with your vitamin C. I did a YouTube on this. There are so many aloe vera gels that have so many chemicals in them. I would suggest if you ever use aloe vera, watch that video. Now I'm gonna add a teaspoon of organic vegetable glycerin. The glycerin gets a little sticky. Some people don't like that, but glycerin has some amazing properties. It is known to lighten the skin. It's a great humectant. It's great if your skin is really super dry. And then at the very end, dropping in some vitamin E. You can either use liquid vitamin E or you can use the gel caps, but you only want a 1% concentration, so that's about a little less than a 16th of a teaspoon. Vitamin E is an antioxidant and it's an oil, and it does help to keep the vitamin C from oxidizing quicker. There are two types of vitamin E. There's synthetic and there's natural. So just know, if it ends in OL, it's natural. If it ends in YL, it's synthetic. I was told by my father, who was a big nutritionist in the 60s, that the mixed hypocryls is always the best. So I wanna put that on my skin as well as inside my body. And one last little detail, the pH should be between 2.8 and 3.5. You just dip it in, look at the scale. Now if you look at this one, it looks like it's a little bit below 2.8. So I'm putting a tiny bit of baking soda. I'll stir it up and then test it again. And that will raise the pH. So do it a little bit at a time. 
If the pH is too low, it's too acidic for the face and it can just be very irritating. So you wanna raise it up a little higher. And this little funnel came with these glass bottles. So now I'm gonna pour this in. Are you wondering how to use it, when and how often? So I'm just washing my face. Okay, I'm back. My skin is super dry. So I'm gonna take my dropper and because I have made two ounces. It should last about a month in the refrigerator, so I'm just gonna use a lot. Oh, it's tingly. It should be a little bit tingly. And as I always say, just gauge with your own skin. You know, this is my journey, I'm showing you. So I'm gonna do this three or four times a week in the evening. And then when you wake up, just make sure you wash it all off. You just don't wanna go out in the sun if you have vitamin C on your face, that's all. You can mix this with your retinols, so that way you can do vitamin C and retinol four times a week, or you can do vitamin C twice, retinol twice, whatever. But I say don't work your skin out more than four days a week. So I've applied my vitamin C, then you can wait a few minutes till it completely dries and put your regular uh, face cream on. The tingling pretty much stopped. If you find it's really burning, dilute it with the face cream right away, or um, wash it off and use less. I used a lot. You can put it on your hands. How many of you girls and guys have age spots from being old? The sun, not your friend. So vitamin C will strengthen those cells so that your skin is stronger. SPF keeps the bad rays off your skin, but for about two hours, mostly, so think about it, do you really reapply your SPF every two hours? We have more skin cancer now than we ever did. We're doing more skincare than we've ever done too. So a lot of people are tearing down their skin. They're using retinols, retin-A's. That is tearing your skin down, thinning your skin. Your skin is not gonna have as much natural defense as it does if let's say, you know, you let your skin be alligator skin and it builds up all those thick layers, but then you have super wrinkly skin. So we don't want that either. So what can we do? Super antioxidants. Vitamin C is the easiest one to get. So with vitamin C and vitamin A and everything else that works your skin, I always say only do the working things like working out your body three to four times a week and then give your face a rest. So maybe make two weeks where you just use vitamin C and then maybe two weeks where you use um, a Retin-A. And you can use Retin-A with vitamin C. They work great together as well. So you can put this on and then use your retinols if your skin can handle it. And again, always listen to your skin. If it starts getting red and irritated and just really annoyed, back off, let your skin heal. It's just like your muscles. If your muscles are torn down and you start running on torn down muscles, you're gonna injure yourself. You need to let your muscles heal, you need to let your face heal, or you're not gonna have healthy skin. You're just gonna have really, really worn out skin, and eventually that's gonna cause premature aging. And this is what we're trying to prevent. So you need to do it in a balanced way, so for all you chemists out here, here's the conversion chart that takes you from weight to volume. And you can screenshot it or I will post it in the description below. So I made this super easy, quick conversion chart for you. So if you go from the top to the bottom, six teaspoons of your choice of liquids equals one fluid ounce or about 30 mLs and 1 16th of a teaspoon of vitamin E. That will give you 1 96th of an ounce, and you really want 1 100th of an ounce, which is 1%. So just make your teaspoon not quite a 16th. Just don't fill it all the way to the top. And then six grams of vitamin C powder is approximately one teaspoon, depending on how finely it's ground. So if you have a scale, weigh it, or you can use the vitamin C I use to have the same density. So the last thing you're gonna do you're gonna make your little label. I will leave a link because not all bottles come with these cute labels. And then you're gonna put this in the refrigerator.
I forgot one more thing I really wanted to say to you guys. I don't know where all of these DIY vitamin C serums are coming from. I don't know if everyone's just taking them off the internet with all the recipes and all the formulas that are all completely different. I'm not sure what's going on. I just want you to know I put a lot of studying and research into every single video I do for you guys. I'm a mad scientist, I'm a skincare professional, and I do a lot of research. And of course, always do your own research before you just make something that you see on YouTube. I cannot emphasize that enough or stress that enough because I see things, quite frankly, that scare me to death. And I think, oh my God, please don't do it. I wanna write notes to these people, but I don't, but just do your research, okay? Okay, till the next video, I hope you have a great day, great week, great weekend. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I will answer them.